Okay, so expectations can be a funny old thing. Unfortunately, because of the way that the internet is, it's almost impossible to go into a movie these days without having some preconceived notion of what one should be and how you should feel about it. Just in the same way that I was told Venom Let There Be Carnage was terrible and came out thinking it was a lot of fun, I was told Dune was an action-packed sci-fi masterpiece that was going to be the next Lord of the Rings. This kind of guided my perceptions of how I thought the movie should be and thus when I went to see it, I ended up leaving the film feeling a bit disappointed. The same thing happened with Tenet and though I initially came out of the theatre thinking meh, after revisiting it, it's come to be a film that I absolutely love. Tenet feels like a puzzle box with an almost infinite amount of things to unpack from it, but going in with the mindset that it would be Inception with time travel in it, it was difficult to feel like it didn't miss the mark. Now this mark was of course set by me, and this preconceived notion was the scoreboard that I judged not only Tenet off, but also Dune. In my original review for the film, I praised the cinematography and world building, but I also said that I felt let down by the movie as it came across like it was just setting up a sequel that we might not even get. Now at the time of making that review, a sequel hadn't been announced, but honestly, knowing that one is coming is great news, even if I feel that it was a bit misguided by Warner Bros not to film things back to back. I criticised it and said that though Star Wars clearly took elements from it, that it actually adapted things better to a movie and the typical 3 act structure. I didn't even end up giving the movie a score on my review because I just didn't really know how I felt about the entire thing and because of these reasons you can kind of see where my head sat in terms of the film. Because of the aforementioned aspects, I left the cinema feeling like this was a big misstep but after revisiting the movie I have to admit something. I was wrong. You were what? I said I, I, said I was wrong. You were what? Uh, look I'm wrong, I, I've said I'm wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> Now strangely enough, the thing that made me appreciate this movie even more was actually the 1984 version by David Lynch. Over the weekend I picked up the brand new 4K release of it and if you enjoy Denny's adaptation then I definitely recommend that you go and pick it up too. It's got a lot of the same scenes in it but also some alternate ones in its own style that I think will make you appreciate this one even more due to how it adapts the material in its own way. I really like the 1984 film and though some elements are a bit dated, I think it acts as a great companion to this movie. If there's things that you don't understand or moments that you got lost on, it'll help clear that all up and it just adds a fuller feeling to this entire universe. Now why I think the two are worth viewing is because that movie feels like a typical 1980s sci-fi fantasy film with heavy exposition whereas the 2021 version is an experience. A lot of the story beats and character motivations are very much laid in the subtext and Dune isn't here to spell things out. It's here to engross you and give you somewhat of a sensory experience so that you feel like you're lost in a space opera much like the characters. It really must be said that you should go and see this film in IMAX as the sound stage and giant image definitely sucks you into the movie and it makes the visuals even more breathtaking. You really get pulled into the worlds and seeing the vast sunsets, towering monuments and barren halls becomes all the more atmospheric upon seeing it the way that it was intended to be viewed. Now I kind of want to revisit that Star Wars comparison as it's one of the things that I got the most heat for and though I told people not to get sand in their vagina, I think they have a point. However, in order to discuss it, I need to talk about spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie then you should shield yourself from the next part of the video. I will also be hinting at minor book developments too, so if you're someone who just doesn't want to know anything, you have been warned. Now one thing I got slammed for in my review was comparing the film to A New Hope. Even though I clearly said that Lucas took from Dune, I still had people complaining that I'd even mentioned it in the same breath and that I was stupid for comparing the two. I obviously know Dune came first as I said it in my review and as Lucas admitted to basing Star Wars upon it, I thought it was a fine comparison to make but hey it's the internet and I guess not. Now what I caught spice for is that I said though there are similar plot elements across both pieces, A New Hope adapted said material better to a 3 act structure. It had a hero whose family was taken away from him and he trained to become adept in the ways of a mystical magic whilst fighting against a dark force in the universe. However, what I slammed Dune for is that its final act didn't feel like a triumphant one and instead of the hero defeating the dark side in a blaze of glory, Paul very much had to retreat into the desert to gather his strength in numbers. I felt this was a bit of a dour note to end a movie on and though the book takes this exact same path, I did say that I think they could have changed up the novel. 
Several books that have been adapted to film tend to take what works about the source material, fit it to a three-act structure, and then have a big blowout between the forces of good and evil. Though lots of people have said that The Fellowship of the Rings is similar to Dune, I have to disagree as I think the latter is a lot more understated whereas the former isn't. Though both are very close to their literary counterparts, they are doing different things and I actually think that Dune is closer to season 1 of Game of Thrones than it is to any of Tolkien's work. In the first season we watched as the houses all came together in order to seemingly strengthen the empire or well the kingdoms. However, Game of Thrones season 1 was very much about betrayal and it culminated in Ned Stark being killed which put his children on a path of retreat before they enacted their revenge. That's very much what Dune is about and in it we see the fall of an empire, watch the death of a father and then are teased the idea that the family will get its revenge after rebuilding in the wilderness. Much like Ned was called into a position to be the king's hand away from his home, the Atreides are called to Arrakis. Much like how Yue betrays the family, Ned is betrayed too and both the father figures are killed. Sadly, both Ned and Leto know that something is up with the so-called promotion that they've been given but they're bound by their duty to stay in the place they've been summoned to and this ultimately leads to their deaths. Dune thematically is meant to be a tragedy and not going into the movie with this mind state made me believe that it should be a certain way when really it was meant to be the opposite. Now before you start, I have read Dune but it was a good 15 years ago and I think that it's had so many movies that have taken things from it that I've actually forgotten what made Dune Dune. Not to spoil too much of what's to come but Paul Atreides isn't really the stereotypical hero that you might think if you've only seen this movie. He's painted out as somewhat of a saviour figure but there's far more complexity to his character than just being the next messiah. As we progress into the story, I think we will very much question what it means to be a hero and this is actually hinted at with the movie's ending. Throughout the film, we watch as he has visions of training with Jamis, but come the end of the movie, he kills the character before they can ever come to fruition. Now I have seen people say that they think he's simply seeing things through the eyes of Chani, but either way, it shows he's a different kind of hero to what we've seen in other movies. Most heroes would have found a way to cheat the rules and have spared Jamis, but Paul kills him because he knows that it will provide him with access to an army so that he can get revenge. It's a really complicated ending and though it's seen as a victory, Paul does somewhat lose himself in carrying out the actions that he does. Now this is kind of why I got Dune wrong. I went in with different expectations, some of the wrong interpretations and overall just misjudged what the movie was trying to put across. This is an epic space opera that's laced with a lot of subtext and outstanding visuals that makes it a completely immersive experience. The film is meant to be viewed as a tragedy and it's also a warning to not only the fallacy of hero worship but also the downfall that blind duty can lead to. After rewatching Dune, I've gained a new appreciation for it and if you're someone who went in disappointed then I recommend that you rewatch the movie and also give the 1984 version a watch. I am really hyped for the sequel and it's great to see the movie making money at the box office especially with all the factors riding against it. The movie not only dropped on HBO Max but it also leaked with HD copies online everywhere the week before it was available on the streaming service so it's pretty impressive that it's still doing as well as it is. It's definitely going to be a film I revisit and if this video does well then I've made money from saying I didn't like it and then money from saying I did. So I got you you sucker. No I'm just kidding. And there have been several films that have changed in my mind over time the more that I've watched them. I didn't actually like Casino Royale or Batman Begins the first time that I saw them but looking back on those movies they're some of the best interpretations of those classic characters ever. So yeah things can change and I'd also love to know if you hated the movie and now liked it, liked it and now hate it and if you liked it and still like it and so on and so forth. All opinions are valid and as someone who's done a 180 on the movie I'm more than happy to have people disagree with me, just try and keep the conversation civil. Hey kids, now because of this, I'll give you a thank you and enter you into a competition in which we're giving away 3 copies of the Phase 3 MCU box set on the 30th of October. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the film. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the last ones are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on twitter at heavy spoilers. If you want to see our initial opinion and breakdown of the movie then make sure you check out our ending explained which will be linked on screen right now. If not then thank you for sticking through this video, I hope you've had a good one, I love you and I'll see you on the next one if you're still like me. 
And with that out of the way, thanks for checking this out. Enjoy the rest of your week. Peace.